Happy Mother's Day, everyone. Yeah. Happy Mother's Day to those watching online. Uh, let's just look to Jesus. Jesus, we welcome you. Jesus, we welcome your presence. Holy Spirit, we ask you to come and have your way today, God. We love you. We long for you, God. We long for more of you, Jesus. God, we enter your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. Just put thanksgiving and praise on your lips today. We thank you, Jesus, for you. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for your blood. We thank you that your blood is the only way we can come in. We thank you, God. We thank you for your voice. We thank you for your all-sufficiency, God, your faithfulness, Lord, your loving kindness, God. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy, your grace. We ask that you would come and shine your face upon us today, God. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Praise you, God. We praise you, Lord. Be exalted today in this place. We lift you high, Jesus. We lift you high, Jesus. Mm. Have your way today, Lord. In Jesus' name.
Blessed is the man that you choose and cause to come close to you. We shall enjoy the goodness of the Lord in his house.
Yeah, just praise him. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Jesus, be glorified. Yeah, right there in your seats, just sing to him. Your own song, it doesn't matter. Sing directly to the Lord. Be lifted up, King Jesus. Worthy is your name. Worthy is the Lamb. Yeah, let's just sing in the Spirit for a little bit. Do you mind just, just go as you feel that? Just sing in the Holy Spirit for a minute. The Bible calls it the tongues of angels. Yeah, come on, Missy. Just get lost in His presence. You for your presence. Be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. Worthy is your name. Have your way even now. We pray your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. In these four walls and across the world online right now, your kingdom come angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Complete breakthrough, shift in lives, healing in bodies, healing in minds, restoration of homes. Do what only you can do, Lord Jesus. Wherever the Holy Spirit is, there's liberty. Be free right now. In Jesus' name. Thank you for 
for the river of life. Thank you for the river whose streams make glad the city of God. Have your way, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Can we give Jesus praise? Yes. Yeah. So, so good. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Look to somebody, find a mama, say, Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> or a soon to be mama. Thank you, Jesus. Happy Mother's Day to all the lovely moms, going to be moms, spiritual moms, if you want to be a mom. It all works, it all fits. Super honored to have you with us. And you didn't see it, but we snuck some, we got some roses hidden for you, right? When you on your way out. Uh, under the table, so grab one. If your mom want to be a mom prophetically, take you a, take you a rose. And thank you, Lord. So, um, man, I'm excited this morning. How good was that? Huh? Thank you, Jesus. Hey, when Tracy started plucking on the violin, I said, hold on. I said, Tommy, bro, I didn't know, you know, Mother's Day, okay. She's going, don't, don't, don't. So, so good. Um, man, a couple of quick announcements. And I um, want to pray with you at the end. It really excited. Short word, won't keep you long, but I hope potent. I hope would transform us. It's been on my heart. And, and um, that'll be good. So, um, first off, I'll do announcements, then give you an opportunity. Uh, you know what? Let me say this first. I just, I don't know if it applies this morning. Uh, in here online. I don't know. I just, sometimes you don't know with the spirit, but I saw this real clear in prayer this morning and I'm going to switch to the headset mic after uh, offering. But I saw the word insufficient, very clear. It was like glowing on a wall in the, in the back room. I just got taken into it. And then a, a middle-aged black woman got brought before me. Uh, I say middle-aged, it was hard to tell. Definitely not young, definitely not old. And I felt like there was something to do with not only you feeling insufficient, uh, maybe in life in this hour, but literally in a practical way, financially. And we, we definitely are never trying to embarrass anybody, but we're just family here. We just love you. And if that would resonate, and I felt like it was something very significant, like insufficient. Like if you didn't have this payment, you could lose a home, lose a car, something significant. And, um, and I just want to make sure and throw that out there for who the Lord would want to touch. If, if you don't mind raising your hand, if, if that would be you, um, love to pray for you. Okay, right here, right here, in the back. Yeah, what, what is your name in the cream colored? In the cream color, you can yell it out. We're all family here. Jasmine? Jasmine, I really, uh, and we're going to pray for everybody, but yeah, thank you. Um, are you really, man, I'm going to start crying. I feel the love of God. <laughs> Come see me, would you? Just want to hug you. And where are you from? Where from? Diana. Is that Georgia? Okay. Oh, hey. You sure are beautiful this morning. Are you a mom? Your mom. Okay. How are you? So what's going on? Uh, we don't want to embarrass you, but we do want to bless you. I believe it was you. And, uh, is there like a bill or something significant, insufficient with funds or? A lot. Yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm hmm Yes, ma'am. Okay. Let's come up here. We're going to pray for you. Said her, her dad passed. She didn't have a job trying to take care of her mom and, and all that. Some of the team, you don't mind coming? Getting prophetic words. I remember you. So beautiful. And uh, I want to do this practically. If you have any, I actually, because I saw that, I, I never have cash on me. I don't, do you all keep cash? I don't do that. Uh, so I snagged some. I um, think the Lord I had, had some just stacked up on my dresser. And, uh, up to this morning, I was praying because I really didn't get nothing for my mom's Mother's Day. So, and her birthday is on Tuesday. So I was like, God, if you could just give me a job so I could provide something for her. Oh, wow. Shireen, you mind coming? I've read on. 
Maybe, maybe yeah, you three, we're going to pray and prophesy. Look, we're going to shift it. And uh, Oh, but also, too, if you have cash, I got some in my bag. Just we're going to throw it at her. And uh, here in a minute, here in a minute, really bless her. And um, so, Jasmine, we love you. Jesus loves you. I was trying to just seek God this morning. And he said, look, my Jasmine, you know, trying to touch her. So y'all want to lay hands and we'll pray. Jesus, thank you for, for Jasmine's life. What a sweetheart. The humility upon her. Thank you that you called her for such a time as this. Esther 4.14, I just speak it over you. You were born for such a time as this. It's a new day and a new way. Be glorified through her life right now, Lord. I pray you shift it through the family. You shift it radically. God, use her as a mouthpiece in this generation. Set her apart. Seal her by the Holy Spirit. Seal her by the Spirit in this hour for your glory, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. William. Scripture says... My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. I'm so glad Ryan is not carrying any cash because his riches are way, way much than any of the earthly riches. He is going to provide all your needs according to his riches and glory. Even now, receive it. Let heaven unlock right now. Every facets of Jasmine's light now flooded with the glory of heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for Jasmine. Father, I pray that she would know that you are a good father that she receive and step in to her identity as a daughter of the king. Mm, yes. Daughters don't worry about anything when they know who their father is. And I pray right now, the reality of being your daughter would open up in her heart that her father owns a cattle on a thousand hills. She will not worry. She will not be insufficient in any way. And I just decree that over your life, Jasmine. I, I pray that this open up. Be your reality. You're a daughter. You are a daughter. And your father will take care of you, I promise you. In Jesus' name, I declare this over you. Yeah, Psalm 68, 5 and 6. A father to the fatherless and a defender of widows is God in his holy habitation. God sets the solitary in families and brings out those who are bound into prosperity. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we break fatherlessness and we bring the fatherhood of God right now. Heaven descend upon this young one. It's not an accident. Where now we call forth the giftings of God right now in Jesus' name. We call forth the giftings of God that have been buried. We excavate those gifts right now. We call them forth in the name of Jesus. The Lord is making you an oak of righteousness. You'll be in your 60s, 70s and strong, a pillar in the house of God. Lord, we thank you right now. We speak life over this one. Whatever was planned before, we cancel it. We say the angels of God, there's an eternal plan that God has had for your life. We declare that in the name of Jesus. So we thank you right now. Prosperity. Lord, you take them out of the ash heap. And you make those women joyful mothers of children. We thank you for this Mother's Day. Lord, we thank you. We bless the mom, too, also in her seat. We thank you, Father. Jesus received great glory. The angel of the Lord encamps round about those who fear him and delivers them. It's a new day in Jesus' name. I just see you pick, picking flowers, and every seed that you've sown is coming to new life, and I just see new life over you, new life, and I just bless you with the new life, and every seed that you've sown may come to fruition. We just call it forth right now in the name of Jesus. May you be blessed today, and your mother be blessed today in his mighty name. Thank you, God. Yeah, I just thank you for Jasmine, Lord. I thank you for the daughter that she is, Lord. I thank you, God, that she is the apple of your eye, God. Mm. And I thank you for the gifts that you've put in her, Lord. And I pray for a financial breakthrough right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. I pray for the perfect job to come forth, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. God, I just pray for doors to open, unexpected doors to open, and financial blessings to flow over her, God. 
I thank you for the provision, Lord. Yes, I thank you for the provision. In Jesus' name. Awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Look, that worked out pretty good, huh? <laughs> you even got a chocolate bar. We'll pick it all up for you and bring it to you back there. Yeah. We love you. Give Jesus a hand and Jasmine. So good. I'm going to go to the headset, Mike. I think. Check, check. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. So, so good. And everybody else that raised your hand, let's, let's pray as well. God, I thank you that the prophetic ripple effects and touches all and those online watching, Lord, bless them in the name of Jesus. Do a new thing. I pray you'd break open um, abundance and sufficiency, not only by provision, but by identity. That you do a new thing, Lord, and you be glorified and pleased. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. Will you mind if I give that to you? Thank you, sir. Okay, so a um, couple of quick announcements. I'll give you an opportunity to give and then an awesome word on dying. <laughs> Isn't that good? <laughs> Super excited about this one. How can we best die? You can sneak out during the offering if you feel, feel the need or act like you're going to the restroom. I was talking to Michael yesterday, Kuliano. He was like, bro, what, uh, what you feeling for tomorrow? I said, man, I'm really excited about it. Galatians 2, I mean, in this and just uh, being crucified with Christ. He's like, and then before we got off the phone, I was like, tell them moms to die now, like on Mother's Day. <laughs> I said, yes, sir. Uh, but no, that'd be good. It's the freest place. That's how Jesus lives fully through us, you know, once we die and get over ourselves. And such a sweet, sweet spot. So, um, but a uh, quick announcement for um, about two weeks out now, uh, I want to remind you, Glory Nights is around the corner. Yes, Lord. I think it's going to be a collision of heaven and His Word and presence and power, so we'd love to have you. Um, Friday night, th so those, typically those conferences are hence Glory Nights. So we just go after heaven. We'll teach a, a bit and preach, but impartation, laying on of hands, encounter, experience. And um, Saturday night, we'll have water baptism. Really excited about that. Those typically get a little out of hand, and, um, but very biblical, and I'm believing for lives to be transformed in that regards. And then we just added on, I don't know what I was thinking, because we're just going to be breaking a fast right before that, a potluck on Pentecost Sunday. So it's going to be a loaded weekend. Bring your, your goodies, your appetite for the spirit and the natural. And we've got some great cooks in the house. It's going to be fun. Okay, so um, I think that's it. I'll give you a quick opportunity to give. And then um, we'll jump into the word together. You should have offering envelopes, checks made payable to Ascend Church. And um, just want to thank you guys for your generosity, really sowing into God, giving unto what God's doing. He's doing so, so much. Um, you know, it's really amazing. Many of you may not know this, but actually we're, we're on television as well. I don't, I don't, I forget about it, to be honest with you. I don't even think about it. It's on like now, so I'm never see it. <laughs> you know, so we don't know anything to do with it. But, um, but the Lord's touching many people. And this is interesting that just transpired from all that. So years ago, I even remember telling my dear friend, Sean, he was over our media at the time. I was on a plane. I bet I was connecting in Atlanta, knowing the Lord. I don't know now. But spending time in prayer and uh, going to a vision where I saw this arrow go down this list of a progression of where the Lord was taking us just by impact. He knows I don't care. I just want to be where he wants us to be. And, and I saw the initial stages and then like, you know, we've, we had a studio before. We've done this for years. And then social media and then it went to a final one um, and it was television, an arrow. It just kept moving down on this plane. It went to television. I said, what in the world? So I knew it was pricey and all this, and, um, but I told my friend, Sean, I said, bro, I think some, some point in time the Lord's going to want to put stuff on television. Who knows? Just stay faithful. Years go by, and just recently, maybe six months ago or so, 
a network reached out to us. I literally told my assistant, I said, no, nah, they tried to send me the email. I said, that ain't real. <laughs> I said, I just not. Because we get so many emails from all over the world, just all kind of stuff. And you got to stay in your lane. But I was in prayer and I felt like, hold on, no, check that. And sure enough, we ended up jumping into a conference call and they're legit. They do their major networks and all this stuff. So it ended up being the Lord. That's local. And apparently, just this just happened. I don't know anything about all this stuff. I just preached the word. And I, I knew too, I said, man, this will be a good trial run because we preach the gospel. We preach sin and heaven and hell. And so I was like, we're going to get kicked off. It's going to be quick. And I'm fine with it. I'm not coming off the word. Um, and so, but we hadn't got no emails yet or nothing. It's pretty, pretty exciting. And, uh, and so anyway, uh, a re another network just reached out to us and said, hey, just for the excitement and also to know what you're sowing into, like what Jesus is doing. We don't really have a whole lot to do with it other than just trying to obey and touching, um, you know, we sow into Israel, the mission field, all this stuff. I don't talk about it a lot, but just recently another network that's looking likely wants to take us over into the nation's and it's supposed to hit somewhere around 50 to 60 million viewers by television. Yeah, so it went like a major jump. Yeah. So fix your hair. You're going to be on TV. That's what I was going to tell you. <laughs> I'm teasing. No, I'm totally teasing. <laughs> if your nails ain't done and you're turning your Bible, it's like <laughs> only 50 million people are going to see it. No. No, I'm messing with you. <laughs> but anyway. But... um. But we're excited because, man, the, the, what we're trying to do, far from arrive, but bring the authentic, pure word of God, see a bride prepared for his return, and just not come off of it. We're finding there's a hungry people about, you know, and so um, thank the Lord. So just what you're sowing into is doing so, so much, and uh, we're, we're very excited for all he's doing locally, abroad, and, and very thankful. So let's pray and um, give you an opportunity to give in person by check, online, and it'll be good. Jesus, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your word. I pray you would have your way again this morning. Be lift, lifted up and glorified. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you do, O bread of life. O bread of life, come fall into our life afresh this morning. And I pray in return as people sow, may they reap a hundredfold. Lord, let it break forth in the realm of abundance and provision for your glory, not for ours, for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. We'll roll a video and be right back. Let me tell you, in the last hour, you're going to stand before the Lord, and it's not going to be how you prophesied so profoundly, how you cast out so many devils. It's going to be who you are, not what you do. And the only way you can become like Jesus is to truly know Him. up this morning the whole reason we do what we do is to know him if you miss this you've missed the entire purpose of walking this earth this is eternal life to know him but we need him we need when jesus comes in everything changes if he's not there you're spinning your wheels but now is the hour you want to go deep in the word of god have the waterfall of the water of the word wash you right now constantly stay under the waterfall of the word and the spots and the stains and the wrinkles of ephesians 5 just come out Jesus. So good. So if you want to turn in your Bibles to Galatians chapter 2, 
Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. That'll be kind of our staple verse, but um, I'll just hop around. won't keep you long at all. How many of you know uh, dying to self is one of the greatest achievements you can access this side of heaven as a believer? You know, if, if you are not born again, your greatest aspiration is to grab all you can for you. You know, gimme, gimme, my name is Jimmy. You and my and mine and, and the greatest victory really outside of loving and knowing him, this side of heaven, is to erase you. That's what this thing's about. And I'm praying that all of us would get there quicker, sooner than later. And you can see it's so crystal clear in scripture. And so I'm really excited about this one. I, I pray that the Lord do it in a fresh way. You know, I love in 1 Corinthians 15, Paul says, I die daily. You know, and Jesus said, look, if you want to follow me, you, you all have heard me quote this many times. He says, take up your cross. And even in one, one of the gospels says daily. So like each day we wake up, one of our highest aspirations should be to die for that day, not gain all I can for me that day. And if we're not careful, it sets in so subtly, what we typically grab for first is what's best for me. How can I better me? What's in it for me? And this is just not the kingdom. It's not the Bible at all. It's so backwards. Um, and so I'm really excited about this. And I'm praying really like a, a fresh joy and excitement for this would come on us. Not like a run from, you know what I mean? Because um, it's how Christ shines through us fully. It's, it's just the only way. It's, it's so beautiful. It's the perfect kingdom design. And so um, I've, I've touched on this before, but I really see it as these three main keys in life to the believer. Again, if I'm speaking to unbelievers, this does not apply. You must be born again. But to the believer, three of your greatest keys you can have on the key chain of life, you, you never want these coming off, is to love God with all of who you are, which then translates into loving people. Loving God and people is the highest and greatest first two commands. Second, really in tandem with dying, you could honestly, I think, overlap one at place two. This isn't by priority or three. What is the renewal of the mind? because that aligns you with what the Lord's paid for fully. And the third one, dying. We've got to die to self. As long as any of us is still alive, that is areas that Christ can't live through. And it's so clear in scripture, it's so like evident. Um, and I'm, I'm so excited about this, I was praying yesterday. I wanna let you know too, when, when messages like this by the Spirit go forth, listen, I'm t you can still sneak out, I won't say anything. I mean it because the Lord will be like, you heard that, and you know this is my heart, and you saw it in my word. Now we die. Because the excuse is the rug kind of gets pulled out, and you'll start noticing by t probably before the day's up. I'm telling you. The Lord will start trying to pin you to the tree. He said, Galatians 2, Paul says, I am, I am crucified with Christ. You, you lose a hold of the things you want to grab for and what you, your strengths and abilities and your, your walk or where you wanted to go, you know, and, and I pray do it in us, because if you find a crucified company, it's over. It's over. Jesus is shining through like a glory cube beam from heaven in, in all of his, his glory. But, oh, and I have an amazing, um, I like it, imagery for it, kind of to give you a visual. Oh, yeah, I just want to be on the floor. Is that okay? <laughs> You're like, what is he doing? Just felt to be on the floor and look you in the eyes. <laughs> Make sure you, we're on the same page of dying together. <laughs> I'm teasing. Uh, but an image at the end, what we'll throw up, and I think it'll give a good visualization of how, how if we can fully die, Jesus can fully live through us. And it's, it's so, so powerful. So powerful. And I, I pray it, it'd be so more and more. And I have some notes here, and we'll see if we follow any of them. But um, I want to say this, kind of in tandem, it definitely connects, but I, I touched on it the other night with our students. <clears throat> I'll even see it here, you know, in Matthew 24, <clears throat> sorry, Jesus says, you know, disciples, if you back up, say, how will we know when the time is near, when you will return, like when it's all going to conclude? He says, take heed lest you be deceived, gives a big list of items, but one in there, he says, it will be as it were in the days of Noah. 
And if you really kind of just, if we all could together get caught up and go back in time and just land down in the days of Noah, I think we'd be like, whoa. So this is what the Lord's saying it's going to be like. This one man who stood righteous and true amidst a wicked generation. How many of you see the world going dark and darker? It's not getting better. Don't be fooled. There's this kingdom, dominion, theology. I don't, I don't sign off to it, subscribe at all. It's just not biblical. You can take it if you want, but it's not, it doesn't work. Isaiah 60 is so clear. It says that deep darkness will cover the people, darkness the earth, but his bride, my version, is going to shine like the noonday sun full of glory. So there's going to be a clear separation, but... You know, um, but as in the days of Noah, the Bible literally says God was mad that he, he made man. He says, I'm done. I'm going to wipe them all out. And he found a righteous man, Noah, set apart in that hour. He says, build an ark because I'm going to destroy everything. And that is where everything's going if you're not born again. That's why it says the great. See, this is why you don't want me on TV. I don't know what they were thinking. <laughs> I'll tell you, when they, when they emailed us, I was like, what are they seeing that we're not seeing? They, they definitely hadn't heard our sermons or anything. So great and terrible day of the Lord. Great for those born again. Terrible if you're not. Terrible. That's the Bible. So um, anyway, here's Noah. God says, build an ark. Scholars say it took some summers upwards of 60 to 70 years to build that ark. No power tools, not as latest Milwaukee. We got any power tool guys in here like Milwaukee? Milwaukee, Jason, or DeWalt? DeWalt, hey, I got that too. I like them both. Okay, so anyway. But Noah didn't have any of that. I'm talking chisels, axes, you know, saws of old, whatever. And so you have one man righteous it's the narrow path that leads to life, broad that leads to destruction. Many will find it. Many are called, few are chosen. This is, this is the Bible. And um, he's living righteous, separate. And everybody knows that the ark, when you look at its immense detail, it's a picture of Christ. It even has a door in the side. Jesus had the, the hole in the side of his ribs and all this. Well, now that Jesus ascended, who's Jesus' body and ark in the earth? We are the church, right? We are the ark, that we are the Christ-like ones in the earth that salvation comes through. And so the ark, I propose, even a picture you could look at it from is that Jesus is building you and I, but guess what it's made out of? Trees that have been killed, dead, dead ones. And they're linked together. Think about this even with the, with the flood, right? It, it, Jesus says this. I'm just blowing through all my notes, and we'll see if we can go there at all. But Jesus said, if you want to save your life, you will lose it. And this is human nature. Me, my, save my life. Put you down to get me up. And the king was backwards. Jesus says, you must hate your life and be willing to lose it to gain it. So imagine, picture all these trees in the earth. Thank God, the ones that got cut down, which would be, I, I love to look at the ark as the body, you and I, knit together and planks put together, which right now in this hour, it's super key. You get, you lock in to the body of Christ together. I think it was in Hebrews, I was in the other day. Paul says, do not neglect the coming together of the saints, as many have, he says. You know, and he goes on and on, but uh, uh, there's a whole nother teaching. But how many of you know God won't bless disorder? There's this beautiful progression that God does. There's order. God sees it. Then he blesses it. And then once he blesses something, it multiplies. So it's order, blessing, multiplication. But until we get in order the way God, he'll never bless it, ever. He's like, that's a train wreck. I'm not blessing that. And so we don't want to obey scripture and we never unlock the progression of destiny. We don't want to come together as the saints. Says, oh, it's just better for me to stay in my PJs. Or I just don't like so-and-so offended me. And stay at home and get in, get in disorder to the word, and just, but don't be blessed. And for sure, you won't be multiplied. Malachi, it says there's a curse. I'm just, I don't even mean to go here, but there's a curse literally on your finances until you tithe and, and give offerings. It says, how have you robbed me? And see, I, I didn't, I'm doing this after. I'm not trying to manipulate anybody. But he says, 
How, they say, how have you robbed me? God, you've robbed me. He said, how? He says, in tithes and offerings. And if you read, it says there's a curse on your money because you, you don't give by way of tithe and offering. You've robbed God. So again, knock yourself out. Feel like you're holding on to what you've got, stewarding, make up budget excuses, all you want. But when you do that, you get in disorder. There's no order to the word. No blessing is going to come. No, no, no multiplication. Um, one after the other, marriages or whatever, the, the entire word, we've got to get in order. And when God sees order, he blesses, then it multiplies. It's so beautiful. So um, I didn't mean to get off on all that, but Noah, here he is righteous in the earth. And he, let's look at the trees as you and I, cuts them down, the ones that made it, praise God. And he kills them, he chisels, he works away. I was in Isaiah 64 recently with our students. I may go there as well. We'll see what we have time for. But can you imagine the trees, let's just look at it figuratively, that planted into the earth, they felt right to save their life. They didn't want to be cut down and used for God's purposes and die to their plan. I'm a tree. I want to do what I want. I want to get my roots heavy into this horizontal plane of what's in it for me. And then the dead ones look like that was foolish. You got cut down, chiseled into something you weren't really initially going in that direction to be. The whole while God's working on you through a righteous man named Noah and building you together as the body of Christ. This thing's not about us. It's not about us. We need Jesus to kill us and crucify us with him so he can live. And trees are like, that was foolish. That was foolish. Here I am sucking in the water of the horizontal temporal world. Love it down here. Look at my leaves. You're dead. Useless. You could have been a professional this and you gave it all up for what? What are you doing now over there? Then the floods came. Guess who drowned? Those locked into the, to the earth. All the, I would imagine what that looked like. The trees as the water came up and up and up and, while the other ones are floating, ascending into Christ. So dead ones rise in the end. Dead ones ascend into Christ. And, and I pray it be of you and I. And I love to point this out too. If you don't link in with another, the body of Christ right now, and I say this, not, not for our house. If the Lord leads you, we, we love you. But I mean across the board right now. It's not the time to be out there. I've said this so many times. Uh, out, out across the world, if you're hearing me in different houses, get locked in for the long haul and just go for it. But even isolated ones that you want to give your life up for the call, but you want to be that maverick board out there and do your own thing. You don't want to lock in with others and lay your life down one for another, which is what true love is. You may float initially, but you'll ultimately become waterlogged and sink as well. You don't float as a boat and, you know, in a vessel like that. So um, I pray he'd do it a deep work in us. You know, let's read Galatians 2.20. And, and while we're turning there, I just want to have a few things I, I wrote up. I have here, if you want to fulfill God's highest destiny for your life, you must die. You want the, the anointing to rest upon your life. I hear this one all the time. You must die. You want to carry God's glory and touch his glory. You must die. You want a happy marriage? Die. You want God to use you. You want to truly love God and others with all of who you are. You must die. I'm learning this. The mature ones pass through the doorway of death. But if you want to hang on to your life, you'll plateau out somewhere in God for sure. You'll just get benched. You just get benched. I'm telling you, this is how God does it. Those who follow Jesus, they, they're dead ones. Love the silence. So watch this, Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Just want to stop there. The second part B of that verse is, is just as powerful. But I have been crucified with Christ. Paul writing, it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. You see what he's saying here? And I'll be honest with you. I don't feel like I can truly quote this verse right now in my life with absolute truth before heaven. I, I'm, this, is a, this verse is a goal to me. I feel like Paul legitimately could say that. I think we quote it, but do we really, does heaven go, yeah, you're right. I feel like angels are like, heck no. About 80% of you still alive. 20% of Christ is coming through. And we love to quote these verses. I'm looking at this 
as, you know, where, where Jesus, and we'll hopefully get to these verses later, but he says, look, if you want to follow me, it's going to be amazing. I'm going to bless everything you touch. It's going to be glorious. I'll make your name known. No, it's completely opposite. He says, if you want to follow me, you must deny yourself. Even in one gospel, he says, you must hate your life. It's pretty opposite. Dudley's, what is up, man? I'll give you a hug after. Y'all been doing good? So good to see you. Um, it's like so, wow, like not seeker friendly at all. Hate your life. Deny yourself. Take up your cross. So first deny yourself like, oh, wait, Lord, what, what am I doing that I'm not denying about me? And I promise you, he'll give you a list if you pray that. In love. Take up your cross, which means you haven't been crucified yet. You understand you're still on the journey. One gospel says, take it up daily. Jesus says, take up your cross daily. First Corinthians 15, Paul says, I die daily. And I believe the ultimate goal is to get to Galatians 2, where now I've finally been crucified with Christ. So the, I, I propose one of the greatest like aspirations in the Christian life, a real one, for real one, if we want to walk the map of Jesus, is to deny ourselves, take up our cross, die daily, until we can finally say with all legitimacy, I have truly been crucified with Christ. And at that point, and only at that point, is when Christ fully lives through you. Until then, it's, it's obscure. And I believe there's certain areas of our life that we're dead in and Jesus shines through fully. Others, we still have a hang on tight, a hold on to very tightly, and Jesus can't get through. Does that make sense to you guys? So I pray he would... Um, do it in us afresh. And, and like I said earlier, when you pray this, he, he takes you very seriously. And it's, while yet it may seem to be a painful thing in the journey, it's so glorious because Jesus shines through fully. It's where the, the, really the freest life, this side of heaven is the dead one. You just don't care anymore. Dead people can't get rejected. They can't get hurt. You can't hurt them. You, you know, I, I, a joke that one time, if you ever slap a dead person and they get mad at you or something, they, you know, they don't care. Their value system's in Jesus and him living. And so if, if you're still very quick to be offended, you're alive and well. You know what I mean? The dead life, it's like, you say what you want. My, so let's say here we are, and then here Jesus is. And if we die, we, don't, we have no value here. I don't care about anything around this. I want him to shine. I care about him. And so you hit this dead point of offense, hurt, rejection, and it just, you're like, you're going at the wrong thing. I don't care. I don't really care what you think. I care about him. And so it's so much uh, of an easier lifestyle to, it's the intended way, really. It's how Peter, Paul, all of them learned under the Lord. So I have here a few pointers and we'll do our little picture at the end to hopefully give a visual. But I have here, this is what our goal should be every day. How can I die more fully today? Like, let's switch our priorities, not what's in it for me today. Not push you back and me forward and climb the corporate ladder or whatever it may be. But how can I die more fully today, Lord? Because whenever we die, Jesus shines through fully. It sounds so backwards to the world because it is. I have here, if you are not more dead to self as each day, month, and years pass on, you have for certain veered from the path of truly following Jesus. Please hear that. Here, here's a second one that will make, make it hit home hopefully better. If you are not more dead right now than you were last year, you are not following Jesus. I don't care what verses you quote to me, if you think you're a disciple or not, you are not following the Jesus I know and the one of the word. Because the only people he allows to follow them are people that die more and they take up their cross more and they deny themselves more. So you are deceived in your mind as to thinking you are following Jesus. That's what I have. I really just want to make it real, real clear. If you are still fighting over the same things last year that for your rights and to chip back and, and all these selfish um, just hangups that we have in life, if it's the same, that the gauge in life, you have, you have stopped following Jesus. Really, but I read my Bible, I show up to church, I prophesy. That's fine, but I'm telling you, people that really follow Jesus, he'll look back every so often too and check you. 
He said, no, no, why are you still behind me? I told you already. You can't, you're not allowed to follow me. I don't see a cross on your shoulder and you're still about you. Bench. Jesus will do that so fast with great love, hearts coming out of his eyes right to you. I'm telling you, if we're not dying to self, please hear me again, you are not following Jesus. And I'm preaching to me just as hard as anybody else. So Jesus goes and he journey and he sees all these people following him for miracles and food and multiplication. He just scans them. He goes, man, about 10% of them are really followers of me. So he hits them with a hard gospel message, sifts them. He says, finally, got back down to who's really following me. I pray, go forth by the spirit in this hour. Really, that's what I want to be. That's who I want to run with. People are like, yes, Lord. Where in my life, please assess me, where in my life am I not giving up me, singing about me? Where will I not die? The pride, selfish ambition. The Bible says root of all evil is tied into that thing. I'm following Jesus because I get. No, it doesn't work that way. We, we got to die to it all. I'm this, is the, this is what I love about the bridal realm. They're a dead company. The true bright, the wise versions, they're dead to it all. I look at it even like this. You know, you see a progression in scripture where it says servants, which is incredible. And then you jump up and Jesus says, hey, boys, I no longer call you servants, but friends. Meaning I've brought you into a closer tier of relationship with me. Then the third and final one be, would be the bridal realm. You're one with him. What's amazing about the bride is she walks in all three. It's the holy of holies, inner court, outer court. Servants stay on the perimeter. They're all around the cross. They serve God. Servants alone. Now, don't get me wrong. I love, the bride can walk all the way out to the outer courts and serve better than all of them. It's not limited to, but highest access. Friends, inner courts, much better, but not quite dead yet. Holy of holies, there's zero left of you. And this is what we want in our prayer life, his voice unto us, in destiny. And how we get there is we, we deny ourselves. And I believe Paul legitimately got there and he pins it right here. He goes, I'm telling you, telling you boys, listen, you're not going to get it. It's going to sound cliche and everybody's going to make a bunch of t-shirts out of it. But I mean it. I have been crucified with Christ. And that now the point I'm at is... Now the point I'm at is I, I'm not here. Anymore. I don't live anymore. Christ lives in me. And that's why plants churches, writes half the New Testament, cursed a person blind if you mess with them too long. Crazy authority, deep, deep love. He was like Christ in the, you could see Paul, but it wasn't, that he's like, I'm no longer here. I have fully died because I've been taking my cross up all these years. And, uh, I'm, I'm telling you, this is the glorious way. This is the victorious race of the Christian life. It's it. I know not popular. I know you're going to get a lot of friends from it, but it's Jesus and full glory coming through vessels that will die. And the only way is like, oh, yeah, Lord, not mine, me, my, you, you, you. And so um, I have here the number one dead giveaway, no, no pun intended. I... I after I wrote my notes, I realized what that sounded like. Uh, number one dead giveaway to someone who truly follows Jesus is that they are dead. That, listen, Jesus masters in this. You need to understand the Jesus we serve, the Bible one, not, not the famous glitter and lights that, that you sometimes see, the, the famous G Jesus, the real one, that we serve true and true through the Bible. One of his greatest MOs in life is to produce dead people. That's what he's focused on with great intention. That's what he's after. With great love, because he knows he can't get in and through you. I need to get some Kleenex, please. Ah, right here. So 
Sorry about that. But his greatest, he, he knows he can't get in and through you until you're, you're fully dead. And so I'm, I'm telling you, this is one of the things, as the devil masters and many other things, Jesus, one of his greatest attributes, which all of them are picked out because he's perfect God, but he masters in people that follow him and killing them. That's what he's after. He's not interested in, in gifts. Anything that's done that's, that translate over, translates over into eternity is valuable. He did through you anyway. But he, he looks back and he's looking for dead people. That's it. He's not wowed by anything other than what he does in and through you. But he loves you. It's the whole John the Baptist. You know, he must increase. I must decrease. And um, let me, let me um, watch. You don't need to turn there for the sake of time. But Luke 9, verses 23 through 24. This is the one I was talking about earlier. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily. So it's not like weekly, annually, it's every single day. And so if we keep running from this, all you do is prolong the process. Or you just need to sit on the bench and claim to be a Christian. Hopefully you get through the pearly gates and, and that's it. But if you really want to walk this thing out and fulfill destiny, let's just go ahead and know what the assignment is and turn it into like a positive, like an excitement, like, yes, Lord, let me do this quick. The quicker I can die, the more fully you can shine through me. So have your way, Lord. Um, he says, for whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. Um, first, uh, sorry, Luke 14, 27 through 33. Luke 14, 27 through 33. And whoever does not bear his Christ and come after me, his cross, sorry, and come after me, cannot be my disciple. You can't even learn from Jesus until you're willing to die. It's not going to happen. Your, your learner light bulb will shut off. You won't learn anymore. You'll, you, I'm telling you, you will plateau out and go no further. Let's say there's A, B, C, D, and D's perfect will. You'll, you'll camp out at B and just stop there until we're willing to die. And he'll take us so far, but a disciple is a learner, a learned one, a pupil, a student from the Lord. And so, um, for which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it, lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he's able with 10,000 to meet him who comes after him with 20,000? Verse 32, or else while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. He lands it right here, verse 33. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has, cannot be my disciple. So I love it. Even in context here, Jesus is saying, look, before you follow me, count the cost. Because you say you want to go with me for the long haul and you want my full glory and my full will. I hear all that, but I'm telling you the cost is your entire life. So just know that, check it at the door early, and then you know we'll progress. And I, I propose often as believers, we follow him, it hurts. We die to a certain point, and sometimes, if we're not careful, we just say, "That's enough, Lord. I can't. I can't." My right hand was fine, left hand, but now you're trying to pin my feet. I want to go where I want to go. I want to walk this way. I have these plans and aspirations. My family's here. I know you're telling me, like Abraham, to go here, but no, I, I got to go here. I got to this, that. We, we, it's our will. He's like, "Fine, no worries." Bench. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> it's good though, right? It's the word. Yeah. And, uh, and man, what, what's awesome is when this hits, and again, you always know I'm preaching to me more than anyone in here. Um, it, it just is so precious because it's pure. It's the real true way. And this is how Jesus starts to shine through people. Loving him, renewal of the mind, and, and dying. Um, so, so good. So, um, Man, we've got so much here, but 
Let me quote a few more and then I'll show the image and we'll pray. To the extent of whatever part of us is still living, Christ is not. Super helpful to know. Remember, Paul says, I have been, past tense, I've been crucified with Christ. No, that's how he lives in me. But if there's areas of our life not crucified, that's where Christ can't come through fully. Whatever part of you that is dead has Christ shining through in full brightness. Christ can only live and shine fully through the areas of our life that are truly dead. Romans 12. Let's go there real quick. This is so good. I normally quote verse 2, but 1 builds into it, and it's the same concept. Romans 12, verses 1 through 2. It's kind of good, too, because this will tie into our image at the end. Kind of give a, a good visual to hit home. Verse 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Isn't that awesome? Uh, that word beseech there is beg. Paul, to the ch church, or basically to Romans, sorry, not the church, but to the Romans, he's saying, I beg you, by the mercies of God, he'll give you the grace to do it. It's not on your own. Um, by your own works and ability, but by his grace, he can sure kill you if you'll yield. And that's what this life's about. By the mercies of God that you present your bodies as living sacrifices, meaning you live on the altar, you die. And I propose that's what then unlocks verse two. Holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Paul's saying, he's saying, look, this is just reasonable. This is the, the common ground of a believer. This is... What is expected is holy and acceptable, reasonable service is to be a living sacrifice, meaning I live again tomorrow to be a sacrifice. I live again the next day to be a sacrifice. I live again Thursday and Friday to sacrifice. Let me die, Lord, so you may shine. Please expose the areas. I'm telling you, life will start to go woof, in glory to major glory the more we die. People that hang on to their life, they, they do the mountain. They go around mountains all their, they, they hang out in the wilderness all the time. They turn 11 day journeys into 40 years because it's, that's what all the Lord was trying to do, just kill them. And he sure did. The ones that wouldn't fully yield. And so, um, but watch this verse two, it says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Goodwill, well-pleasing, perfect will of God. And so I love to see it that way. The more, again, if you attach verse one, that we'd be living sacrifices, it connects to the accompanied renewal of the mind, and we can walk more fully in the will of God. It's really amazing. And um, you don't need to turn here. Romans 8, 13, for if you, if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll quote this one quick because it's, it's powerful and I think it applies. Uh, I went over this with our students. We went way more in detail, but Isaiah 64, 8, you don't need to turn there. We love this one. We love to sing about it, but it's a really horrible verse. <laughs> but now, O oh Lord, you are our father. We are the clay. You are the potter. And we are all the work of your hand. That's a terrible verse, terrifying. We're like, you are the potter. You know, I am the, we, we love the songs and the, and, um, but you, you start looking up pottery and it's a brutal process. Uh, I dig a, did a kind of deep dive on it and there's three, three processes. Let's just go to the, the throw one where they spin it on a wheel and literally step, there's like eight processes. So as soon as you start praying, God, you're the, you're the potter, I'm the clay. We think of this dainty, no, it's brutal. Don't pray verses like this, I'm telling you. God's like, I'm glad you asked. Yes, I am the potter. And he'll go get a lump of clay, which is just dirt, that's who we are. And it says the very first process of making pottery, they beat it to a pulp. I mean, just wham, just God loves beating folks. Pow, boom. And, and uh, Janelle, yeah, you, you, and they really do, don't they? Yeah, she, she did pottery. And what they're doing is they're getting the air bubbles out. They would just pound you. But Lord, where's the glory? Use me. I want to set the nations on fire. Yeah, I will. We're getting there. Eight stages later, I'm beating you right now. 
getting all the air bubbles out, which are the pockets of self, because they know when you put it in the kiln later, if there's air pockets in you, you'll break. You'll be fragile and brittle. You'll break. And this is what happens often in people that get thrust out into ministry too early because of the gifting. They're a faulty vessel. You don't want that. You don't want it. Let him beat you. Step one. Step two, the moisture. Finally, you're like, oh, the nice moisture of the spirit, his presence. <laughs> <laughs> only reason he does that is to then bend you and fold you ways you didn't want to be to make you pliable and if you just don't want to be pliable he just all right take them off the wheel beat them again <laughs> beat them <laughs> and just know this god will have his way he doesn't produce janky vessels if you're going to do it god's way he's going to have a perfect vessel if not he'll just keep taking you off the wheel and benching you he loves you. He just, I'm, I love you so much. Super stubborn, but I love you. <laughs> Super hard-headed. So then, they, then they, they, hey, finally you yield. Finally. Moisture. You're like, now's my moment. I'm shaped like he wants me to be. Next, next phase is they, they take you off and just leave you out to dry. This is where we get the term bone dry from. They literally just leave you. Have you ever felt like God just benched you and left you off out in the middle of nowhere just to dry? He'll do that. And they literally put them in a crate and don't do anything. Just leave you there forever. They say, even when you think they're dry, they're not. Because the deep inner, uh, the depth, I guess, on the inside of the clay is still moist. And they, they can't put you in the kiln yet when you have moisture in you because it'll expand and explode and the, the clay will break. So you're like left out hanging. This is like Jacob under Laban for years. When you just had a Jacob's ladder vision, you think you're going to shake the nations, and he just throws you out for 14 years and just leaves you hanging out to dry. This is dying. This is healthy. This is Bible. This is beautiful. It makes pure, pure vessels. Then next phase, they throw you in a kiln, which is the fire. Test your patience, the heat of life. This is, the, this is Isaiah 64. Nobody's ever going to read that again come out of the immense heat. I mean, it burns. It's hot to solidify. You think, oh, praise God, I'm done. No. Then they glaze you. You're like, I love that. That felt nice. I look pretty now. Only to be thrown back in a kiln twice as hot. You know, and so there's all these phases. This is Isaiah 64, uh, 8, the potter and the clay. It's similar to dying. And the sooner we'll allow him to do it, the quicker he can shine through, you know, and it, it's, it's so, so glorious. So, um, man, I've got so much more here, but uh, this one is, is paramount. I must quote this. Revelation 12, 11. Revelation 12, 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And we all like to stop there. It says, and they did not love their lives unto death. See, this is the, the life of an overcomer. Victorious ones don't love their life even to the point of death because they're dead already. They don't care. Their value system's in Jesus. You can kill them. You can rebuke them. You know, offend them. They, they don't care. You can put them last in line. They don't care. You can go first. They're not fighting for rights. They don't care. You can never notice them. They don't want to be noticed. They're dead. It's so freeing. It's beautiful. Well, you just walk right by and didn't say, hey, you're alive and well. Dead people are like, I don't, don't need to be noticed. It's not ever about that, but look at Jesus shining. And they did not love their lives unto death. Man, I've got so much here, but let me see. All right, we'll... We'll just put up the, um, the graphic and then let you see it and then we'll pray. But Lord, do a work in us, I pray. So, so good. Yeah, so if we can put that up. Oh yeah, check this out. So, so uh, back to the Galatians 2 point. Remember it says, um, he says, no longer I live, but Christ lives in me. And the picture here is, is, say you're looking through a window or glass, and Jesus is the imagery, of course. His image is trying to shine through our life fully. He's trying to come through. If you're born again in here, Jesus Christ resides in you, and he's trying to shine through fully. And that looks like God's perfect will. 
But when it's still fully us, you see how you can barely see any of the image coming through? I mean, I know, I know it should be pretty self-explanatory, but this is when we are still alive and well. And that's why we on purpose put a massive letter I. It's all about I, me, my. I live, my will. It's over here. Can you guys see that? Well, Jesus can barely shine through that. If, if you're top heavy on your will and your way and what you want and you're all about you, Jesus is not shining. You have not been crucified with Christ. That's, you're not even in the will of God half the time. God, Jesus can't shine through that. You're born again, praise God, but not, uh, not his full will. Romans 12, good will, the next one. Jesus is shining through more. I love to do that progression from Romans 12, two of good, well-pleasing, and perfect. This is when we start dying more in the second category, taking up our cross daily, starting to die more, starting to, you know, I love that Paul says, I die daily. But then in Galatians, Galatians 2, he says, I've been crucified with Christ. So we die more daily, stepping into God's good will, die even further, well-pleasing. And then when we hit Galatians 2, like Paul says, where I've totally been crucified with Christ, now Christ lives in me, Jesus can be seen fully, crystal clear, like looking through a storefront window that just got cleaned with Windex. And I believe that's how we walk in the perfect will of God as well. So I just want to give you a visual that, you know, Oh yeah, Lord, like help me. Like I, I, and I'm telling you, I guarantee you, I was praying this yesterday again in the, in the word, just like, Lord, I, I cannot have these tinted hues over the glass of my life where you, you can't shine through fully. Like I've got to die. Help me, Lord. And he can, he can certainly do that. He's a master of it. And so we get to the point, I want to legit, like my goal amidst so many more is that verse. I pray we'd take it as well as like homework, if you will really a life call, but Galatians 2.20, that we get to the point where we can really say that like Paul and it resonate as truth before heaven. I know we, we can say it prophetically and, we, and spiritually speaking it's happened, but I mean literally, literally. Where every day we, we kind of get up and it's like, no, we're pretty much 80 to 90% crucified and let the Lord work on the other. But when it's flipped and we're still top heavy on our will, I'm telling you, Jesus can't shine through that. And that's why right out of the gate, he knows that, right, right out of the gate, when he gets followers, he tells them, step one, deny yourself. I'm telling you right now, you're going to be a window with heavy, heavy tent. I'll never shine through you. You'll be wondering why you're frustrated all of your day, why you're going around mountains, why I can't use you, you know, and things like this. And so may we progress unto dying to self to such a beautiful extent where Jesus is, is shining through fully. So you, you guys can go ahead and stand. Maybe the worship team could help me. Tracy, I sent you plucking in the glory. Oh my gosh. Oh, that, was, that was insane. So yeah, thank you, Lord. And, and um, just trust me, I know it's not a fun message, but you, you want this in life. You really do. Really, the the most miserable life is to become born again and then just not die. You're stuck. Like, what are you doing? The, the plan of the Christian life is to die unto his full glory. Like by the time he returns, that's what we want to be able to say about our life, that we have been crucified with Christ. And so if we want to hang on to our life, Jesus said it so many times. There's so many more verses that I didn't quote. If we want to hang on to our life, it's really you're miserable. It's like a fish out of water. It doesn't fit the Christian narrative. It doesn't work the Bible way, you know, and, um, but something about sinful nature and the nature of, of mankind, we want our will so bad. We'll fight tooth and nail to hang on to it. And, um, just not a productive way. So let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much for your word. And why don't you just kind of lift your hands to heaven or as a, as a sign of surrender, and I really pray that, Lord, Galatians 2.20 over our life, that you would allow us to be crucified with Christ so that you may truly live in and through us. Lord, have your way. I pray for a fresh grace to hit this house and our extended family upon line with the ability to die daily, a greater desire to deny ourselves and take up our cross daily and follow you. Not our will be done. I don't want to live anymore. No longer I live, 
No longer I live, but Christ lives in me. I pray, do it, Lord. Do it like only you can do. Holy Spirit, do a deep work in our lives. Give us grace to let go and, and, and be crucified with Christ for your glory. Let us step into that deep, holy of holy, bridal realm. Where all of who we are that is contrary to you is just dead, dead to it all. Be pleased, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Awesome. If the prayer team could come, we'd love to pray for you. And, and um, mothers, don't forget as you hang out and fellowship after, we've got some beautiful roses for you. So grateful for you. And so I want to invite anybody that may want prayer. Could be that, just to die further. Um, healing in your body, fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit, or whatever it may be, we're up here for you. We just want to love you and pray for you as we worship Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this beautiful day that you gave us to come into your presence as a united body of Christ. Dead planks joined together by the love of Christ that is weaving through our hearts. Holy Spirit, continue to bind us together with the cords of love as we become more and more dead to the world. Thank you for the word that was spoken to us this morning. May the word be alive and be a part of our spiritual being. Let our spirit man become more and more alive as our flesh become dead to the world. Even when we are dead, we are alive to the things of heaven, sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. It's no longer us that live, but Christ is alive in us. I bless your children in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. May each one of us, as we depart from this place, may we continue to be in sync with the Holy Spirit in our family, with our children, with our spouse, at our workplace, in our school, in our college, in our academy, in our neighborhood. May we be the newspaper of Christ. Let others read Christ, see Christ through us as we live for you unoffended, overflowing with joy and hope and love, being contagious of God's presence. We surrender ourselves to the spoken word. May you be exalted and let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.